Hello everyone, Hyper here, and today's video will be a follow-up to last week's video where I talked about the state of the DK moving into Shadowlands, some of the issues with the spec, um, and the things that I wish that they changed. So since that video happened, there have been essentially three rounds of changes. First one was to Legendaries, they also made a change to the Kyrian Covenant. Then today we also saw a change on the PTR to Tuning. So I wanted to cover those, let you guys know what's been happening with the DK and what my thoughts are going forward. So first up, they made a huge tuning pass to legendaries. So before I read these, keep in mind that less than an hour after they released these patch notes, uh, or they were data mined, they also released a blue post saying that the team internally feels that they may have gone overboard with nerfing some of these legendaries and they will be reverting some of the changes that they made. Um, so I don't know if that means that they will be reverting the Frost DK ones or they were talking about other legendaries. They didn't specify, but all of these nerfs should be taken with a grain of salt. The first legendary that I will talk about is Biting Cold and this one was actually buffed. This legendary is pretty much the Frozen Tempest trait. It increases your Remorseless Winter's damage by 15% and they upped this to 25. So this will just make Remorseless Winter a higher portion of your damage on AoE if you take this legendary, which I think is a good change because at 15% it felt a bit weak. This legendary has really good interaction with like Gathering Storm, with our Remorseless Winter uh, Conduit, so there's potential there, but the baseline percentage at 15 was just a little bit too low. Then the second one is Kultira's Favor. This was the best in slot legendary for Breath of Sindragosa and Obliteration on a single target, and in most scenarios. So the Obliteration damage, or the Obliterate damage, was nerfed from a 10% increase down to a 5% increase, and the chance to refund the two runes was nerfed from 15% chance down to 12%. I'm not sure if this legendary needed that big of a nerf. Um, so the damage portion got nerfed by 50%, and the proc chance only got nerfed a little bit, but it will be noticeable. A 12% chance is not that big. 15 was already pretty low to begin with. 12 is not going to help us at all. So this nerf... Um, might actually impact which legendaries we take on Cleave. Then Rage of the Frozen Champion, Obliterate has a 15% increased chance to trigger Rhyme that has been nerfed down to 10%, and you will now only generate 6 runic power when you use a Howling Blast with a Rhyme proc instead of 8. At 8 runic power and 15% chance, this was already a mediocre legendary. Um, in most cases, you were still taking Kultiras. So nerfing a legendary that was already like questionable if we're going to use or not is a little bit weird to me. Then for Unholy, they nerfed the Deadliest Coil legendary. Um, this wasn't the best in slot legendary, but it was essentially the legendary that makes your spec feel playable. So the 10 runic power reduction on Death Coils is still there but it will only extend the duration of your Dark Transformation by one second instead of two. I think their concern is that with high enough gear, you'll be able to essentially keep your Dark Transformation up 100% of the time, and I don't see that as a bad thing, so I'm not exactly sure why they hit this Legendary with such a big nerf. Uh, they essentially halved the value of the extension on Dark Transformation. Then Death Certainty, Death Strike, and Death Coil, deals 10% up to 20% increased damage. So again, a buffed legendary um, and reduce the remaining cooldown of Defile and Death and Decay. I think their goal was to buff how much of our damage comes from Death Coils, maybe. I'm not entirely sure. Um, with the nerf to our best in slot legendary, Frenzy Monstrosity, that we'll talk about in a second, and our second best, Deadliest Coil, this legendary might be a little bit more useful now, just because it will allow you to drop Death and Decay more often, and there's also a little bit of an incentive to use Death Coils, but it still doesn't affect Epidemic, and in situations where you want Death and Decay or Defile more often, you're typically using Epidemic, so a little bit weird. 
Then our best in slot legendary frenzied monstrosity that you are taking single target AoE cleave no matter what situation. Um, this wasn't the most interesting legendary, but it was numerically the best. It got nerfed from a 20% attack speed and damage of um, you and your ghoul buff down to 12 seconds or 12%. So that is almost a 50% nerf of this legendary. That is absolutely massive. I am 100% expecting them to revert this maybe up to like 15%. Uh, 12 just seems much too low. Then for the general legendaries, pheromones got nerfed from 10% haste of you and your minions down to 5%. I don't think any of the specs were using this legendary to begin with, and nerfing a legendary that no one is using makes no sense to me. So this one should be getting reverted because there's absolutely no way that they would nerf a legendary no one's using, right? Yeah, we'll see. Um, then moving on to the Covenants, so Kyrian has seen some changes. Two weeks ago, um, I believe it was, the Kyrian ability shackle the unworthy got changed. They made it so you no longer gain cooldown reduction whenever you spend runes. Rather, they changed it to have a 50% chance of spreading to a nearby target if you spent a rune using attack. So obliterate or festering strike, scur strike, you know, hard strike, all those abilities that use runes had a chance to spread shackle the unworthy to a secondary target. So it was actually a pretty interesting gameplay because you had to keep spreading your shackle debuff around to different targets if you had more than one. And it gave you the potential of keeping this debuff up 100% of the time. So, for example, as an unholy DK, you would drop your death and decay, put shackle up, and then, you know, just start spamming your abilities. And as soon as your death and decay was over, you would keep target swapping based on which um, enemy got the most recent shackle debuff. So a big change with this was that each time the debuff bounced to an enemy, it started at 15 second duration. So this allows you to just keep bouncing it from enemy to enemy and keeping it up 100% of the time. They changed this to now spread at its current duration. So if there's five seconds left when you spread the debuff to a secondary target, the secondary target's debuff will start at five seconds. So this makes it so you want to spread the debuff as fast as possible after you put it up and then it's just going to time out. This is a thousand times more boring and it's also a thousand times worse in terms of damage. So even though it's worse in terms of damage after they made this change, they nerfed the ability on top of that. Even with you being able to keep the debuff up 100% of the time, it wasn't our best covenant. Night Fae was still better, but they still nerfed it. So I'm a little confused. And since they made that change to the baseline ability, they also changed proliferation. It now increases the duration of the dot by 3 seconds and increases its damage um, that scales up with Conduit rank. So, a little weird, there for a second, I think it was like a day or two, we had the potential of actually playing Kyrian and it was something that was on the table and then they just took it off and said, nope, we don't want you to have a choice. They also made a change to Abomination's limb. It's still bad. But the change they made is that, depending on what spec you are, you gain some sort of benefit whenever you press it. And so as a Frost DK, you gain a Rhyme proc. As Unholy, you gain Runic Corruption, which is useless. It's such a, <laughs> such a little amount of resources that you get. It makes no sense. And then as a Blood DK, you get three Bone Shield Charges, which might be like the one okay one. Uh, but they nerfed the damage, and they also made it so... The grip happens way less often. It, it's just bad overall. Um, I don't know. It was a covenant that in PvE you already never played, and now you're never going to play it even less. D don't ask. Don't ask. All right, so now looking at the single good change that they made to the spec. Um, in my previous video, I talked about four-handed frost, where you'd swap between weapons. They added a debuff called off-balance, 
whenever you swap a weapon in combat, you incur a 30 second debuff where you're unable to benefit from runeforge enchants. So this is entirely eliminates weapon swapping. And I talked about why weapon swapping was bad in combat. And there was a pretty general consensus that weapon swapping should not be in the game at a high level. So now if you weapon swap, it's just a net DPS loss. So I'm very happy that they actually introduced this. All right, that's enough good news. Let's go back to the bad news. So on the most recent PTR build, so this is not on the beta, only on the PTR, they nerfed Frost DK into the ground. So first they hit us with the light nerf, uh, Might of the Frozen Wastes. When you use a two-handed sword or two-handed weapon, your obliterate damage will be increased by 30% down from 35. So a 5% nerf on that, not a huge deal. Um, but on top of that, they also nerfed Obliterate's damage itself. So that's going to impact both two-handed and dual wield frost. Okay. And on top of that, they hit us with the Pillar of Frost nerf. Its duration went from 15 seconds down to 12 seconds. Okay, that's already a pretty bad nerf in and of itself, just because you get less global cooldowns. And Pillar has kind of a big interaction with our talents and our cooldowns. So this means that you will have a shorter obliteration, because obliteration lasts as long as Pillar lasts. It means that during Breath of Syndragosa, um, especially with the PvP on use trinket, which has been the meta ever since like Uldir, the PvP on use trinket lasts 15 seconds. Now Pillar is going to last 12 seconds, so you're going to have a 3 second window where you don't have Pillar, but you have the trinket up. That's just bad. So on top of all of that, the cooldown of Pillar has gone from 45 seconds up to a 1 minute cooldown. Again, huge implications. You get to obliterate less often, or obliteration less often. Your Breath of Syndragosa will now line up with Pillar of Frost perfectly. But again, it's going to be a 12 second um, breath or Pillar of Frost within your breath. This nerf might single-handedly destroy Frost DK. Um, what I'm hoping for, and a point that one of my viewers has brought up in my stream tonight, is that... Hopefully, they're just looking at rearranging and prioritizing the damage uh, within the spec. So it looks like they want less of our damage to come from obliterates. So if you're a developer, if a spec's damage breakdown is looking like, you know, 70% of their damage is a single ability, you might want to tune that ability down and then buff everything else. And I really, really, really hope that this is the case here. They're tuning down obliterate damage just to buff everything else. So in WoW, each spec has an aura buff that affects all of our abilities. So after they nerfed our obliterate, they can go in and adjust that aura and just give the whole spec like a 5% increased damage buff um, to compensate. So I really hope that's the case because in a vacuum, these nerfs are absolutely brutal. Um, the Pillar of Frost nerf is going to be a game changer for Frost DK. And I'm really, really sad to see this. Then for Unholy, it was a super, super minor nerf. Unholy Blight got its AP modifier changed from 29% down to almost 28. Um, There's just a tiny nerf to our best talent, just I think to make the other two a little bit more enticing. So those are the changes that have been made to the DK. In general, very negative. I'm really curious which legendaries they're going to actually go back and buff or revert. Um, because in its current state, Unholy and Frost DK in particular have really fallen down the ladder uh, after these nerfs. Let me know in the comment section below what do you think is going on. Do you think they're just setting the spec up for an aura buff? They're just reshuffling where our damage comes from? Or are they actually intending to just nerf Frost DK? Either way, let me know in the comment section. And if you like the video, please. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.